Hello and welcome back everyone. Boyd here again with you for another segment of our Polar Lights Enterprise build-up. This is part six. Well today I'm working on the uh, finishing up the internal wiring here in the secondary hull to make sure that we get all of our electronics in place and uh, so you can see what some of the work I've done here. The shuttle bay has all been finished up and we're, we've got our little Tena Controls uh, control board mounted in here with some hot glue. And what I've done is I've wired in all these circuits now. You can see this little harness here is going to run out through the neck and all that's uh, going to go for our little uh, navigation lights and our impulse engine effect there on the top of the saucer so we'll route that through the neck when we put that on. The rest of this wiring is all in place. We've got uh, uh, these two uh, wires right here, this little harness right here is that goes back to the uh, uh, flashing uh, beacons that are on each side of the rear part of the hull. I think they're called the ion pods on the actual ship and all the other lighting has been put in place and our harness has been nailed down and tacked in place for all of our shuttle bay lighting. So we're ready to go here. I, did, I already did a little light test on this and everything is working fine. We've got power going in. Everything is looking good, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue this thing together. I've wiped off all of these edges here with some acetone, like I mentioned before, to make sure we get a nice clean uh, glue joint. So we're going to glue this all together, and then we're going to uh, uh, do a little bit of tape work to hold it in place, and we're going to do one more light test on it uh, and power it up, and I'll show you how everything works then. So I'll do that off camera here real quick, guys. I'll come back and show you how that looks, so stay tuned and hang tight. We'll be right back with that. Welcome back again everybody and you can see that I was successful in getting the secondary hull glued together and everything worked out just fine. I've got some tape on there holding everything in place. We wound up with a really nice uh, tight fit on this one. I didn't have any issues after I did the work in the shuttle bay. You can see there at the rear our gap uh, is nice and closed all the way up. So that turned out well. All the uh, wiring and harnesses are in place now to extend through the rest of the parts of the model and uh, we're good to go. You can see that we've got our nice little ion pod strobing here at the rear. We've got our green lamp at the rear next to these window clusters on both sides like the production version ship had and you can see that uh, the lighting there at the center uh, is, is lighting up nice and brightly and clear so we're good to go on that. Um, here at the uh, down here you can see the little uh, impulse engine lights again working and that's on a harness that will extend. You can see here at the top this harness here and all this other little group will extend uh, up through the neck and that powers our uh, strobing, our, our navigation lights and our uh, lighting that for the bridge and everything else on the top of the uh, saucer so everything's in place and ready to go guys everything worked out really well what I'll be doing next is uh, we'll be gluing these uh, pylon halves together and you've got a, what they do is they recommend they're slightly warped from the factory but not to worry uh, they straighten right out once you glue them together and stack some heavy books or something on them and let them dry for a couple hours. So we'll be doing that and I'll just basically clamp these over the top of uh, this uh, wiring harness here. And um, we'll be able to just, uh, once we do that and it's all dry and everything, we'll just slide it down the wire and push it right into the slot and that'll be mounted in place. We'll do our putty work on that uh, at the end, uh, just like we have to do the seam work here at the top and on the bottom. And then we'll blend that in with our airbrush, so that's not, not a problem at all, guys. And we'll show you how we do that a little bit later on. So. All right, I'll be back in a few minutes here, guys. Uh, we'll start working on the pylons and get those mounted on next. We'll see you for that. All right, everybody. Well, we're back again, and you can see that what I've done is put uh, tape all over the secondary hull here to protect it, and I've went ahead and laid down my uh, filler along the seam here. Now, I like to do this because it keeps it from uh, the filler from getting all slopped all over the sides of your paintwork and everything like that. So what I'm going to do is sand this down. I'll leave the... Uh, uh, the paper in place here or the tape in place and sand it down to help protect that too and then once I get it pretty close I'll go ahead and pull the tape off and we'll slide it over just a little bit and we'll, we'll just kind of lightly sand uh, the rest of it to make sure we get all that edge off of there and then we're going to uh, uh, be able to take our airbrush and, and do the touch up on this so a lot of you guys have asked about that so I'm going to show you how I do that today so I've got me a fresh piece of uh, 320 grit sandpaper and we're just going to start going to town on this thing here. And I've used a combination of squadron putty and uh, 3M putty on this. I like the squadron putty to fill the bigger seams like I've mentioned before and you can see that the seam that it had in the middle was uh, not huge but I mean it was fairly wide and up here at the front where this uh, mounting bracket fits it was just a, I'm really was just filling in like a minor imperfection right there and so I just used some 3M putty for that but uh, both of them sand really easily. You just got to put a little bit of elbow grease into it. 
And one thing that I like to do here is uh, I've got a little cup of water here and I'll just uh, keep my, uh, my paper wet. And that really, really helps out with your uh, sandpaper and keeps it from getting clogged up. This is already smoothing out really, really nice. I know watching sanding is boring, but a lot of people on the channel ask me questions, guys, and some of them, have, some of the people have not seen the videos before, so we don't want to leave their questions unanswered here, and, and we, I want to, you know, show them the techniques that we've all been talking about on the channel here to uh, work on these models. So for those of you who have already seen it, it might not be interesting, but. Uh, Keep in mind that there's people joining the channel. <laughs> I was amazed the other day to look that I saw there was like almost 2,500 people on the channel now, and I can't believe it. It's really, it's, the channel's really doing well, and like I said, I, I'm just amazed since the very beginning um, how popular modeling is and everything, and uh, I'm really happy to be able to show some of this stuff to you guys. And again, what I talked about before, too, um, the stuff that I show on here is just my way of doing things. You know, there, I encourage you to look around YouTube. There's a lot of other people out there doing uh, similar to this, and uh, you can find a lot of different techniques and tips out there. So there's always a better way to do something. Okay, this is all smoothing out really, really nice. Every once in a while when you do this, you have to uh, redo it because the seam will come back. But what I did... Uh, as I laid down a coat of putty on this, I let it dry for a little bit, and then I actually went back and uh, put another coat on before I even sanded it. And uh, it's pretty well got all the seam taken care of already on this, so we'll have this sanded down here in no time. You just got to get up into this little beveled edge here at the front and make sure I smooth that out really nice. Okay, guys, um, I don't want to eat up a whole lot of uh, camera time here doing this sanding, but you're getting a good idea of uh, how this works. Again, just use a little bit of water and take your time. I'm using 320 grit paper. That'll take this stuff down pretty fast. Uh, once I get the general shape of it worked down where I want, I'll switch to some 600 grit paper, which is much finer, and I'll final sand it with that, and that'll make a nice surface for our paint to lay down on. And uh, we'll go from there. So what I'm going to do is finish sanding this, and then I'm going to move my tape, and when we come back, we'll set up the airbrush and get ready to touch this up and get our seam all nice and blended in. So I'll be back with that in just a little bit here, fellas. And gals. <laughs> okay there, everybody. Well, I'm back, and uh, I have to apologize to everybody. I went and started doing the uh, work on the uh, blending in the paint on those seam edges, and I completely forgot to start the camera recording, guys. So my apologies about that. I know a lot of you have asked about it. I still have to work on the nacelles and the saucers, so there's time in this uh, uh, video series on this build up here to get to get that out to you, and I'll show that on the next video update, guys. But uh, I got busy here, and you can see I made a lot of progress, and the model is now mounted on the stand, and all the power has been routed through it. You can see I've got the wire harness out through the neck with our impulse uh, uh, lights glowing there at the top, and I've got the power coming out here through the bottom. What I'll be doing is uh, hooking up a power switch here, and then I'll put the momentary switch over here, which will uh, control the speed of the Bassard collector effect. But you can see all of our beautiful lighting is coming through really nice on this. Uh, the windows look nice and sharp and crisp, and everything turned out beautifully on it. The paint job is nice and baby smooth. You can see that uh, the window lighting there at the neck looks really nice, and our little red window is in place there. And I haven't painted the deflector housing yet. It's just sitting in there, and I wanted to make sure it fit. I'll be doing a nice bronze paint job on that. And uh, over here you can see that we've got our strobe working and the wiring is out through the pylons which will go to the Bassard collectors. All the seam work has been done. You can see down here on the side we've got our, uh, if I can get it in focus here for you, you can see we've got a nice green window there on the side uh, and that looks really nice. And then here in the shuttle bay again, you can see how that turned out. Beautiful. And uh, up above there, I've got to touch up that whole thing. You can see that arch above the shuttle. It hasn't been painted yet. But uh, you can see I've got an SMD above the uh, ceiling there, which is going to light that little part at the rear above the uh, shuttle bay doors. And then the one here underneath the floor will light the uh, approach lights on the fan tail. And we'll have some lighting that will uh, 
light the dome here and light those three little beacons that are on the back on the dorsal area. But the seam work came out on came out beautifully on this guys and you can see that uh, on the neck here I painted the nice duck egg blue color on the front leading edge and uh, it really looks beautiful. I think what I'm going to do uh, is before I go any further, uh, pro I'm probably going to start putting on some of the decals too because I found out that it's a lot easier to do some of this stuff uh, before the uh, nacelles and the the uh, bulky saucer are on there. And uh, so in the next couple of days I'll be doing some decal work and then sealing that all up and uh, doing some more detail painting on it. And I'm thinking by next weekend this model is going to be done. All I really have left is the saucer and the uh, nacelles, so things are really moving along here. And just a couple little details. I'll paint the base and paint that uh, mounting rod black, but uh, I think next weekend, by the end of it, I'll be done with this thing, so John will be getting his model very soon. I'm going to be starting on a AMT uh, Katinga, Klingon Katinga Cruiser after this. I'm ordering in some nice photo etch parts and some aftermarket parts from uh, JT Graphics for the uh, uh, re, uh, redesigned uh, bridge and forward bulb section on that model to make it look really accurate. We're going to do some really beautiful lighting on it. That's for a client. He's been waiting for it for a while. And uh, so we're going to be busy. I've got about seven models already lined up to build, guys. So I'm going to be building one after the other here. And I'm just uh, really happy with all the work that's coming in. So we're going to keep things rocking pretty heavy around here, guys. All right, that's going to be a wrap, everyone. I hope you guys have had a nice Memorial Day weekend. And think about our soldiers out there. That's what the weekend all is all about. And uh, take care, everyone. We'll see you next time, and happy modeling.